Hello, everybody. So you might have heard that there is a censorship wave going through YouTube. We've just learned over the past couple of days that first Africa stream was deleted from YouTube and now DD Geopolitics is gone as well. And I want to just point that out. Um, and the third one who I've learned this morning who was deleted is uh, Mark uh, Sleboda, who says that on, on, on Twitter X that in a blatant act of political on geopolitical censorship, my YouTube channel, The Real Politic with Mark Sloboda, was suddenly deleted yesterday with zero strikes or warnings under the absurd pretext of repeated violations of community guidelines regarding hate speech. And um, Mark Sloboda apparently got the standard uh, YouTube emails. You need to know about this, that YouTube communicates with us creators only through their automated processes we get these dystopian uh, messages i got them in other contexts not as a strike but but with um with warnings where they where they say um we have reviewed your content and our team not our team it always it's always this this language actually sorry i should just read it we have reviewed your content and found severe or repeated violations of our and then insert policy because of this, we have removed your channel from YouTube. So this is what this is. This is uh, YouTube's nuclear option when they really want to get rid of somebody. Um, you can get strikes. You can get other kinds of warnings, but it's always the same. YouTube tells you that you're in breach of their policies, and then they they tell you to figure out yourself what is in breach. Um, we had on our other language channels the case where we were accused of um, of of using uh, using other creators uh, content although we translate their content with their uh, permission and then all you're you you're given is a button saying appeal and the appeal is then obviously also in an automated process either uh, rejected or accepted but this is extremely dystopian because we cannot get in, even in touch with anyone at youtube youtube doesn't talk to us um cr uh, creators so if they ban somebody for youtube it's really just as much as uh, take uh, putting a tick in a checkbox and you're gone, you're you're deleted. And this happened to several people. So luckily, Danny Haifong's channel is still fine. He's not gone. But Danny points out that GG Geopolitics has been uh, taken off the air. And so has African Stream. And African Stream is even a more blatant form of censorship because uh, the US State Department actually talked about the Africa stream being a outlet of uh, RT, being being RT run, and therefore uh, banned from from has to be banned from YouTube, and it's absolutely horrible because Africa stream produces wonderful content, one um, great content, and geared towards Africa, towards Africans in Africa, uh, for the entire continent across uh, more than fifty countries they cover, and. There, um, I actually don't know how many uh, followers they had on uh, on YouTube. I was subscribed to them and and got their content occasionally in my in my feed, and I always appreciated their their reporting. And um, the outrageous thing is, of course, that here the State Department YouTube deletes a channel that is mainly geared toward um, communicating with Africans in Africa by Africans, and that is now Im that is now impossible. Um, it's not just censorship in the US, it is really the abuse of the U US infrastructure power, right? By, the, by virtue of having these tech platforms uh, under US control, you're then able to influence everybody's speech rights in the entire world. And of course, there is no, there's no proof and nothing of all of these allegations. There are, there are these... Um, <laughs> there are these outlets that 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 look as if though they provide you with unbiased uh, objective research the stanford international observatory for a cyber policy center at stanford university that has apparently judged as lately as september 7th that african stream is russia's latest covered influence pipeline targeting africa and the us um, this is this is the news cycle, not the news cycle laundering. What's the word that I'm looking for? This is the this is the way that think tanks or um, or certain groups 
within society then deliver the kind of pretext that politicians use in order to demand that some action is being taken you know like all it takes is a couple of these sorts of smears um and you know it's it, it doesn't even matter whether it's true or not uh, the point is that <laughs> this censorship wave actually means that the that youtube and the u.s state department has decided that the people in africa and so on are too dumb are too dumb to see through uh, propaganda and therefore um, the propaganda of Russia has to be taken away and I don't think Africa Stream was a propaganda uh, arm of RT not at all but even if it was <laughs> it's an absolute it's an absolute disaster that the that YouTube and that these tech platforms in the West are just just taking the right out to uh, to disallow that form of propaganda because the New York Times and CNN and BBC they are the propaganda on the other side and those channels are fine and safe and and sound and they work well right so we are seeing at the moment the falling apart of this um, of the information environment the crackdown of um, media uh, of big tech big media and big government uh, on the, the social media platforms on uh, where we still did enjoy considerable um, free speech, not to not to unlimited extents. Even before 2024, there were blatant uh, moments of, of censorship when it came to issues like um, like Corona, to especially during the Corona time. But even other things were other people were kicked off these platforms. But now it seems that the uh, kicking off is is expanding and that it is now um more and more geopolitics channels that are being that are being targeted for whatever kind of accusations of, of misinformation and for whom this has like real consequences i mean uh dd geopolitics if you go to their homepage, they they haven't even uh, gotten around to update the homepage yet uh, all of they were relying highly on youtube in order to uh to to do their analysis and to reach their audiences and now all of their content is gone all of their content is gone video unavailable this video is no longer available because the youtube account associated with this video has been closed <clears throat> um yeah yeah that's it that's what this is the face of censorship this is and this is this is now i mean you 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 understand that there's people are getting nervous because obviously the power centers in Washington and Brussels and so on, they are currently losing, losing the narrative, right? The narrative is slipping away from their fingers because reality is catching up with them in Ukraine. The reality is catching up with them in Israel. The re reality is now so, it's getting so overwhelming all of the glaring mistakes in in the in the reporting of the big newspapers and the big channels that uh they're getting nervous <laughs> they're getting nervous and this is a crackdown that that actually shows that the information space and and is um is having an influence right these youtubers here and these these news outlets they're having an influence and they are helping people to see through the misinterpretations of what is happening but it leaves us with this question how do we how do we deal with this because you know youtube is an important platform youtube has a 1 billion user base 1 billion people that's a huge potential user base and or or is it even more maybe it's even more but it's 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 a huge user base um it's just the largest um, platform for video streaming in the world and um freely freely accessible right and potentially pot the potential of youtube to reach even more is is, is is huge um i need to look up my numbers again on, on on youtube but the only thing we have left actually is to diversify we need we creators need to diversify the, the platforms on, on which we are streaming our content and we hope that viewers will follow um for my own channel you know um i am starting i i i'm now uploading my things on rumble 
I have 535 subscribers <laughs> on Rumble. <laughs> so please, if you want to follow, please follow me on Rumble. I am now uploading my archive from my Neutrality Studies um, channel on, on Rumble. I'm, I'm not quite caught up yet, but, but we're close. And um, I publish, uh, publish on Substack as well. Um, uh, mainly in written form, of course, but maybe in the future I'll also do um, video form on Substack, which is also possible. Um, it this is all still relatively new. I'm still trying to find my way around how to how to organize all of this in a way that I still have time uh, to do my my uh, full time job as an as an academic. But the but the, the the need to diversify our platforms is 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 huge now. I'm pretty sure we will tackle this over time um, as. The needs arise, and there are now needs of a lot of creators in in in, in this space. Um, there will be people who will help us with technologies that will hopefully unify some of these some of these communication channels and make it easier for us to be on several platforms. But we need to grow into networks, um, networks among each other, and networks ourselves. We need to create uh, information networks. Uh, across several several platforms in order to beat the censorship kraken that um, strives really on um, exerting power on 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 their monopolies that that they're holding. Although the U.S. just as in other in in economics, um, as they're breaking their own economic spine by putting pressure on other states and to and doing sanctions, they're also going to break their information monopoly spine by cracking down on too on too many um people on too many channels over time um there's nothing else left i um again I should, if you were subscribed to african stream and you appreciated their content go to their homepage, find where they are on on twitter x find where they are on uh, rumble on other platforms um, find them there. Africa Stream um, pre created wonderful uh, and useful content. G the, the geopolitics, I must uh, tell you honestly, I didn't know them before. I was not aware of them. But um, if Danny Haifong <laughs> vouches for them and, and likes them, I am pretty sure they also have they also did uh, useful content. Um, find them on their homepage. Find them elsewhere. Go to Rumble. Um, and um and so also for for um mr mark sloboda find them elsewhere um i hope that this channel here will still exist in the near uh, in the near future but um honestly speaking there's a there, this sort of damocles is above all our, our heads of creators there's there's really nothing we can do on youtube there's we have no power <laughs> and youtube can set the checkbox tomorrow and all we get is an email and our uh, years and years of work on these platforms are gonna be poof, just evaporate and they, they're not they're not even sending us uh, backups of our videos nothing we get nothing we have no rights we have no possibility we are at the receiving end of a very long stick and the youtube youtube is 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 treats us treats us um well if we behave and gives us very useful tools in order to reach audiences it's the biggest it's the biggest advantage of being on youtube this huge potential user base and the fact that youtube feeds our our um, products, our our content to users who didn't know about us before, right? When you scroll through YouTube, that's that's how we get discovered. We don't get discovered through word of mouth. We get discovered through the feed. So this feed is very important in order to to reach a lot uh, a lot of people because you know the feed is basically the digital era way of doing zapping. What what you what TV used to be, what zapping used to be for TV that's scrolling through the feed today and the way you used to discover occasionally things while zapping on a tv today you discover new things in your feed it's the same for the other um platforms like uh the reels on uh on, on uh, instagram and and what's the other one uh, um I'm sorry, I'm just horrible when it comes to social media. I'm absolutely horrible with it. Uh, uh, and I should build up my other sites, but I can't. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the point. Uh, that's all I wanted to say on this morning. And you can see I'm a little bit concerned because this hits home um, very close to me. And I do think we these geopolitics channels that are not 
online with the with the message that that Washington, Brussels, the collective West wants, all of them basically are threatened at any point in time to be shut down, all of them. And we've had enough examples in the past um, of other channels who were who were deleted. Chris Hedges, Chris Hedges of all people, uh, got deleted and banned from YouTube. Um, uh, Scott Ritter got banned from YouTube. Um, it somehow happens in waves every once in a while, but currently another one is going on. And the more, the more these geopolitics channels help you to make sense and help you to to think critically and and not just believe in the narrative you're fed by the New York Times, CNN, and BBC. The more that succeeds, the harsher the crackdown will be, because that's something they have to do. I mean, obviously, the information monopoly is extremely important and the, the, the people in power, the last thing they want, they want is to lose power. And media um, power is a very important tool. So they, of course, will use whatever, whatever means they can to make sure that they maintain this information monopoly. And we have to fight against that, <laughs> period. Um, however we can, so direct connections are good. Um, I hope to see you over on Rumble. Um, my content will be there. Thank you very much for listening to my rant. Bye.